Tonight, we still don't know what happened, whether it was an aviation accident that struck coincidentally last night of all nights in Tehran of all places. Uh, for obvious, but certainly circumstantial reasons, there's also speculation and concern over the possibility that the plane might have been shot down somehow, uh, perhaps accidentally in a case of mistaken identity in the midst of last night's military conflict between Iran and the United States. How are we going to get those answers? Joining us now is Jeff Gazzetti. He's a former NTSB investigator and FAA accident investigation chief. Mr. Gazzetti, thank you very much for being here. This is a very serious and, ser and concerning series of events. It's a pleasure and an honor to have you with us tonight. It's good to be with you, Rachel. So um, looking at this crash and from this distance, obviously we don't know anything in terms of what's been looked at, we don't know anything about what kind of investigation is ultimately going to happen. But you told the Washington Post tonight, quote, to me, it has all the earmarks of an intentional act. I don't know whether it was a bomb or a missile or an incendiary device, but you said if the video of the flaming plane was accurate, I can't conceive of a failure that could cause that much of a conflagration. Can you explain to us your thinking behind those comments? What you mean there? Sure. Uh it, probably the word intentional act would, would be something I would probably correct in that, but it does have all the earmarks of something that isn't typically uh, an aviation accident failure, like you explained in the opening. Uh, the, uh, the circumstantial evidence that, that is out there in the public now, basically the, the, the radar track, the normal profile right after takeoff, a normal smooth within parameters climb to 7,900 feet and then suddenly nothing. Uh, there's no more transponder. It's as if the entire uh, electric system of the airplane, to include the redundant battery backup, it just all goes away. And then when you pair that up with the, uh, the video, and if you take the video on its face, that that is the video of the accident airplane, uh, you got to remember the parallax. That video is, that flame is probably two, three miles away from whoever was filming it. And that was not just some um, uh, a light. That was a, a large fireball where chunks of, it appeared that just chunks of fire was coming off that fireball. And that, and then it hits the ground and, it, and you see this giant plume of, of flame. Uh, things like that just don't happen out of the blue in an aviation type of accident. It can, like TWA 800 and other accidents, but uh, that was a while ago. Today's airplanes, and this was a, a fairly young airplane, are built to be able to withstand these types of normal failures. Uh, a missile or a bomb, not so much, but an engine, uncontained engine failure, or a, a, a cargo fire, for example, it takes a while for something like that to turn into a full-fledged flaming fireball, and that isn't that, it didn't take a while in this case. It was just two minutes into the flight. What do you expect in terms of the investigation of this matter? Obviously, there's a lot of unique things about these circumstances, where it happened, the night on which it happened, the immediate uh, and confused statements about what happened here. What do you think will happen in terms of investigating the cause of this crash? Well, Rachel, I'm hopeful that it's going to be a transparent investigation. And quite frankly, you know, the head of the Iranian uh, Civil Aviation uh, Administration actually said that. He you know, he, he doesn't want to speculate, and that's the right thing to say. They follow the international playbook for aviation accidents. The, it's called ICAO, the International Civil Aviation Organization, Annex 13. It's been enforced for decades. Most countries play by those rules, and uh, it allows people to play in the investigation, like Boeing or NTSB or FAA. I think there might be an issue with Iran being a sanctioned uh, country where there's actual laws in our country that, that will make it difficult for us to exchange technical information. And, but, and hopefully, you know, uh, things can be worked out. Waivers can be written for that. But something like this, it's just very tough in the aviation safety world to, to keep under wraps and to mm -hmm. keep a secret. And, and I think that uh, I think we will get to the bottom of it eventually. I don't know the mechanism by which that's going to happen, but I think we will know. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.